Okay, so I'm going to try to show you a little video. Um, eh, decline that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, a little bit of, with what to do. So here's my, my classroom on Google Classroom. And I'm going to start here. I just clicked on it. And the very first page that it opens to is the stream. And on the stream, you can select a theme, which is, um, or which they have these templates that you can look at. They're generic, pretty generic. I didn't like them. So I uploaded a photo instead. You can choose your own photos. And that would, you would press this button, upload photo to do that. And um, once you, if you up, do that, you press that button uh, there and it brings here and you can select a photo from your computer um, or you can drag and drop uh, if you are so inclined and, and can do that with your computer. So I generally will put any files that I want to upload on my desktop or in a, a simple file that I can just easily get to. So I'm not searching for files, but that's up to you on how you want to manage that. So in the stream, you can come here, and this is where um, you can, if you hit this button here, um, this is where you can move to the top, uh, put it in, and um, say what you want. So if if I was starting out and I didn't already have content in my stream, this is my welcome page, I think of it as the stream. And I want to make sure that when I have, because I have new students now still entering my classroom, that they're seeing this sort of welcome message. Um, I talk about what I'm going to have within my classroom, uh, my contact details, and then my verse that my me and my students always say. I try to put an image in here. It's it's really hard. This is I I keep saying that the this is really sterile templates. I've worked with better educational to, um, technological tools, uh, distant learning tools, and this is really for me and for you. I believe is going to be a little bit ick, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, so uh, let's say that I wanted to do this for the first time. I haven't done it yet. Then I would come in here and I would uh, post uh, hello parents. And this is the, the tool for that. So um, it's four and then you can come along here. You can change actually if you wanted to post it on all of the classes that you're part of. Um, but I'm going to leave it for middle school math. And then for all students, um, again, you could just do a post for specific students, but I would say don't worry about that tool. And then write in any text that you want, any messages that you want that you're going to see when they get to this like home page of your class. And then you, you can also add, you could add a file from the Google Drive if you've uploaded to the Google Drive. You could add a link if you needed a link, um, a file, or a YouTube video. If you if you were so inclined to do something like that, and then you just hit post once you've you've done that. I'm gonna cancel and come out of there. So um, so that is pretty much the homepage, which is called the stream. So if you see this thing called stream, that's what it is. It's just where messages um, go on the very front, and you can see I've already had some messages from parents throughout mine so uh, the comments and things like that you can turn the comments off if you want to you can also every time that you do something within your classroom there's a notification that goes up on the stream you can turn that off too so that's part of one of the tools that you can come in here and um and look in here uh, classwork on the stream, you can hide notifications. That's what I did so that we I wasn't getting these messages all over. Uh, and these are just, I would, you know, grading. I'm, I'm ignoring that pretty much. And um, here's your class code in case you need it. Um, stream students can only comment because you can actually have them edit and post comments and stuff like that. Only teachers can, you can make it that way if you want. It's up to you. You don't want 
students, but I because mostly the parents are using that to, to send me messages, and I'm I'm pretty fine with parents messaging um, me and commenting on on the pages. It's fine. So you know you can take you can take them off individually too. If you, somebody put up some kind of comment that you didn't like, you can take that down if you want. Okay, so I'll let you play around with that. That's the first page, and, and here's your settings tool, should you need it. Um, and then we're going to go to classwork. Now, this is probably where most of our content is going to fall. And I have created in mine these different modules, or like think of it as folders. So the, I have an 8th grade math module, 7th grade math module, and a 6th grade math module. How I created these modules is these are actually these topics, this idea of topics. And you'll see here, it says in the side, as a little index, all topics, 8th, 7th, and 6th. You can organize it. You can, you can um, actually drag and change the order if you want. Just It's up to you how, you how you want it. But in order to create it and to put any information in, so some of these are assignments, some of these are materials, um, some of these are all, or um, what else do I have in here? Uh, sometimes I have videos that I put in with assignments, etc. So you, what you do is go to create, press the button, and you'll see here's here's a list of things I can do. I can set up an assignment. I can set up a quiz. I've done a couple quizzes. They've been fun, and they actually um, once I figured out how to assign points for the quizzes. I can see every student that takes the quiz and I with their parents' email, so I have to figure out their last name of the parent, and then go, oh, okay, that's who, who that was. Anyway, and um, and I can also see like exactly which um, problems they missed. Uh, it's it's really an awesome tool, and it gives me data statistics. I love all that stuff, so <laughs> it's really cool. Um, you can put in a question if that's uh, what you want, and that's like a a question with a response um, material. This is generally what I'm using if I want them to read something and I want them to watch some videos uh, and so I'll put that as, as material and um, reuse the post. You can just re just make it come so that it's um, at the top if you wanted to reorganize. Uh, and, then, and then topic. So if I were to create a brand new topic area. In fact, I was thinking about doing this, so this is my my chance. So I already have 8th grade, 7th, and 6th, but I was thinking about creating a new uh, topic called uh, mental math, and this is for everyone. And that I'm going to to the, call the topic, I'll give it its title, mental math, and then I'm going to hit add. And now it came here, and I don't really want it to be at the very top, Maybe I do, um, but let me just show you if I didn't want it at the top. Oh, I'm going to put it all the way down past the sixth grade. I'm going to drop it right there. All I had to do is drag and drop it. That's pretty cool. Um, then you have these little dots here. You can look at this if you need to rename it, delete it, uh, copy a link, or you can use, do this to move it up and down uh, if you want to move it up to the very top. So if I change my mind, I can actually use this uh, to move it to the very top of the feed here as topics go. Now let's say I want to put some mental math um, documents in. In fact, I was going to do that. I don't have funny. This is it's working out. Okay, so I was thinking about doing that and I put it as material. Um, so I'm going to go to create and material and my title here is um, mental math uh, tricks which I've been working on for the kids uh, description I'm gonna leave that for right now I can come back to it at any time anything you post you can edit so don't worry if you're like oh I forgot to you can go back and add things to your posts um, and I'm gonna put add and I think I have it in my Google Drive and yes, I do. So I'm going to add a few of these things. So um, these are all little little images that I made for the kids. Oh, 
Let's see if I can, I'm going to add those two. And um, I can reorganize these. I can also rename uh, these if I need to because they're, they're not named right now. So uh, I'll have to figure out their order. Uh, it's, it's best to do it before you get to this stage. I wasn't thinking I was going to upload these, so I didn't rename them. But um, it, it's up to you. It depends on what, what you want. But I, there I am. I've, I've got, I'm going to have stop with these two. I put those two images in. And then I'm going to come over here. This is um, middle school you know, all, for all students, yes. So see, I could change and then add this to another classroom if I wanted, but I'm keeping it at middle school. But topic. Now, I want it to be in mental math. It's already going to be, I think. No, it won't. It won't automatically be in mental math. Um, so I could put it in in any one of these folders, but I'm going to put it in the mental math folder. That's the topic. And this is what you might do if you're a subject teacher and you're going in and you're putting something under your rhythmy or games or or like I would mass um, and then post. I'm ready to go. So when I come here, now what I've done is I've created it as a subject and I put in my uh, first material uh, under that subject title, which is uh, Mental Math Tricks. It says when, it, when I'm posted. If this was an assignment, let me just show you how you would do an assignment. So you create uh, an assignment. I'm going to go here, assignment. And it's all the same, just, just like what we just did with the material. Um, but what, what I'm going to do is, what's different about the assignment is that uh, you can put uh, your title, instructions, you can add, just like I just did, um, any kind of documents or images. You can all YouTube video if you, I, I like to um, share videos and then have the children then do the um, the work. Some of the videos I've I've made, some of the video I'm, videos I'm using, um, I've watched on YouTube, and I feel like okay, that's uh, that math teacher's done a pretty good job explaining that particular skill. And um, but that's up to you. But if you have uh, voice files, video files, that's where you're going to add it. There's a create too, and you can create documents, you can create slides, sheets, drawings, forms, etc. Um, so you can play around with that too to see if, if any of that will work for you and your purposes. But um, so you can get as fancy as you want and as or not. <laughs> and then if this is an assignment, then maybe I have for middle school students, but it might not be for all students. So I might go like this and I might mm, pull out some students if I don't want all the students. Or I might come down here, and this is more likely what uh, you use, and this is what I've been using the whole time, is that I might set this first assignment for the sixth grade. And I would put it in that folder, and I would just click on that, and then be like, here's your assignment, okay? Or if it's a mental math assignment, I might put it there. Um, I'm not going to touch anything here, so. But you, hopefully you under, understand that bit. Um, the rubric. I haven't played around with this, so I don't really know, and I think just I wouldn't worry about that right now. When you get really bored and you have nothing to do, maybe <laughs> you can test it out. <laughs> but for now, don't worry. And then once you have um, something, you hit assign, and it then it posts. And once you've put in all the details here. So I'm going to click out of this and go back. Now, um, you'll see here you have a Google Calendar. And so this should sync with your normal Google Calendar. And you can put things up if you want. Then uh, class drive folder. Oh, did I say that? Oh, I didn't show you about the assignment. Um, let me go back because this is important. Parents are already asking about this a lot, which is due. When's it due? Due date. So I have been setting due dates. So I, um, I've i set for Friday the 27th with the thought that I mean, you can put your due date any time in. When do you want them to turn it in, if, if they're turning in something to you? And parents are like, when's the due date? Why is the due date the 27th? Um, that's so far away. Like, they're they're eager. They want these kids to work. So they feel like, <laughs> my, for me anyway. Um, 
And I'm like, well, we really aren't really launching until Monday. So that's why it's Friday, because normally the children in my class would turn in their homework on Friday. So you're going to set that due date when you do your assignment. And I would suggest you do so, or parents are going to go, when's this due? When's this due? And so that's kind of... Um, it takes up a lot of time to respond to parents, and, and right now we're, we're, we're trying to get the content out. So as you see, do March 7th, 27th, 27th. Things will show when they're posted as well, and that's where you can repost if you want it to not look like it's all the way back here. Um, you can repost something. Um, okay, let me just show you. Oh, here's the class drive folder. So I have been using the class drive folder. I find it really easy if I'm loading content. So um, you'll see I've made a folder 6th, 7th, and 8th grade so that hopefully when I have access to the shared drive, because I actually don't have that right now, um, I just contacted Doug, but then I can just hopefully just copy and move the folder into the shared drive, move, move files into the shared drive really easily. But for right now, I'm using uh, my class drive. And I find that it's kind of easy to find everything to keep organized because I have a lot of files already. And then people. Um, here's my teachers, all the teachers that are registered um, on my class. Please uh, remember to register your subject teachers, um, class teachers. If I teach your children, please put me on your class, on your Please put me on your your classroom so I can link parents and easily more easily to my math classroom, and um, and do that also for your subject teachers because I know they're wanting to get in there and upload content. And then here's a list of students. These are all the students Patty has invited, and these are the parents' these are emails, and you can see who's who's signed up. So um, if they don't sign up, if they don't accept the invitation to be a student in your classroom, they can't access any of the documents or any of the classwork. And I keep getting email after email going, I can't, I can't see the, the document. It's like because you don't have, you're not, you haven't accepted the invitation. So they have to do that. So I put that at the very um, start and make sure they are clear about that and if they say I can't access something it's generally because they didn't accept the invitation so just let them know um, I think a message went out this morning to get them to do that and understand that they need to accept and then finally you have grades and this is um, for me this is pretty cool because like I can already begin to see um, where students have gone in and to take taking the tests and the quizzes that I put up. They're just quizzes, online, little online quizzes. I thought they would find fun um, and and practice their skills and doing that and taking those kinds of tests is kind of funny. Uh, multiple choice. And um, and if I click on an assignment, I, I could show you that if you're really interested. And I think that would be a whole other video. But they they actually um, now I have I have the the grades I have the results and I can see every student that's done it so um, what their results were on that quiz exactly and um, and then I can assign a grade um, for them and for that work and every time that they turn in work for an assignment this is a possibility so um, yeah I think I'll make a, another video. If you like it, and this is helpful. Um, oh, so if you're adding teachers, you're like, how do I add a teacher to my classroom, Dr. Power? Uh, it's right here, this little people plus. So you could add there. And let's say you want to add a student. Um, you can invite students here. One of the things that I did is I added myself as a student. Um, I used my personal email. And I became a student of my own class. The reason I did that is because I wanted to see what the student user experience is for my classroom. And so I could understand what was happening because it's slightly different. Um, so that was really helpful. And with my some, some applications of this, some of the, so like the quiz, for example, 
when I created it, I could actually, there was a little eyeball button and I could see what it was going to look like in the end when it was done. So that's my little, uh, I guess, tutorial. Um, this is very generic tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Uh, let me know if you want any more on, on different aspects. I, I could show you how to use QuickTime Player just like I'm doing right now to record. I can show you, um, you know, YouTube, uploading to YouTube and anything like that. Um, and like I said, how to set up a quiz because I've been doing those <laughs> and they've been fun. And um, I think Janice is going to help us with the slides to show us how to do a slideshow, uh, etc. So good. If you have any questions and I can help in any way, let me know. Thank you.